Yes, you can lead us. All right, it is 7.30, uh, June 19, 2018. I'd like to call to order the New Milford Public Schools Board of Education meeting. With the first thing, Pledge of Allegiance, and Greg, if you'd lead us, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And thank you. Okay, at first we'll have uh, public comment. And those making comments, I'd like to remind you that there is a three minute limit. And do we have anybody signed up? No, we don't. Then I'll open up the floor to anybody if they would like to uh, address the board. Okay. I'm going to wait just a little bit longer here. Very well. Okay, we'll close public comment. And before we get to the PTO report, I'd just like to uh, recognize Mrs. Lewis, if she would come up here, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. And if you'd like to make a report, you're more than welcome to. <laughs> part of my speech away here. <laughs> it's very hard for my PTO presidents to give an overview of the year, their year. There are so many volunteers, events, assemblies, field trips, and fundraisers that you really can't put an exact number to each category. I am amazed by the talents and time the parents are willing to donate. The PTO has 65 volunteers who serve on the boards for the PTO and approximately 500 volunteers. The PTO has sponsored over 60 events during and after school. 12 lucky seniors received $1,000 scholarships. Once again, we have given over $100,000 to our schools. These funds were used for field trips, assemblies, family and staff events, and hardships, to name a few. One of the things I am most proud of is how the PTOs work together. They share ideas and brainstorm on ways to make events and fundraisers more successful. This year has been a challenge with our snow days and school going till the end of June. The PTOs have worked with the administration to organize events like slideshow presentations and bingo for books. When the first and second grade students' field trip was canceled due to weather, both elementary school PTOs worked with administration to put together a trip for the young students. This Saturday, graduate, graduating seniors will experience grad party. This committee of 14 work all year to raise over $20,000 for the event and will give away $6,000 in prizes. Starting on Friday, over 200 parents will donate and decorate and volunteer until early Sunday the high school is transformed into a huge playground for young adults. The doors are open to, public, to the public on Saturday from 10 to 12. I am very proud to say I have served as the townwide president for three years. Before I introduce the new president, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all the, the parents, staff, administrators, and the Board of Ed for their support. I think we all have one common goal, and that is that, is that we do what is best for our children. Mandy McDonald our new townwide president has been yes. <laughs> has been on at least one if not multiple PTOs for over 11 years she currently has a child in each school and i know that with her experience and dedication the PTO is very lucky to have her as their leader i hope everyone has a wonderful summer you all deserve it <laughs> thank you Townwide PTO also wanted to thank Ms. Lewis for her years of service. Okay, and moving on to the student representatives. <coughs> Good evening. Hi. Um, to end the year, 
the school hosted a ice cream social event for the high and highest honor roll students on June 6th during the school day. Uh, that Friday, uh, the seniors took a, a great trip to uh, Harry Brook Park to enjoy a senior picnic. Um, I personally, it was fantastic. It was a great time, uh, great weather too. So it was a great day to get out and uh, enjoy the outdoors and get some uh, yearbooks signed too. And that night, uh, the specialty awards were announced for all the students who worked really hard throughout the school year. Um, this past um, week, senior two weeks, seniors have been taking their exams to get ready for graduation. And tomorrow, uh, graduation practice begins uh, to lead up to graduation on Saturday. And graduation will be held uh, this Saturday, the 23rd, at West Conzo Neal Center, uh, beginning at 2 p.m., I believe. I should know that because I'll be there. <laughs> um, but I uh, can't believe it's already here, and yeah. looking forward to it. And then that night at 9 p.m. is the grad night that Mrs. Lewis uh, spoke about, and I am looking forward to it. I'm sure the PTO did a fantastic job. Underclassmen exams start Friday, and we're all kind of excited about it, if that's weird to say, just because the school year's been going on forever. So. <laughs> and a few weeks back, the, uh, the marching band and color guard held their first night uh, with the incoming freshman students, and they've been holding a few rehearsals already since we thankfully had such a long June in school. They may as well. They began a few uh, rehearsals for uh, this upcoming fall's marching band and color guard season, which we believe, I won't be there, so I haven't been paying attention, but I believe uh, this, um, this show will be called Mirage, which is like an Egyptian uh, type theme, so look out for that. And tomorrow, the Piper Literary Magazine is coming out, and we're all really excited for it. Um, if you guys haven't heard, we I think last year we got second place out of the entire state. So we're really hoping we can get first place this year, but we're nevertheless very proud of the literary magazine. And again, I'd just like to thank the board for um, the opportunity to serve for my community and um, here on the board and work alongside all of you for the past two years. So again, thank you. Thank you. And have a good summer. You too. Okay, approval of minutes. I need a motion to approve the following Board of Education meeting minutes. Special, special meeting minutes May 22nd, 2018, and special meeting minutes May 29th, 2018. Can we separate these, please? Certainly. Thank you. Are there any objections to that? No, there's not. Okay, if I could entertain a motion to approve the following Board of Education meeting minutes. Special meeting minutes May 22nd, 2018. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor? <coughs> Opposed? Abstention. Oppo Opposed? Abstentions. And I need a motion to approve the following Board of Education meeting minutes. Special meeting minutes May 29th, 2018. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor? Opposed? And abstain. Okay, moving on to the superintendent's report. So there's a lot going on. Um, this is interesting. Normally this meeting happens kind of right at the last couple of days of school, but we still have two weeks left, maybe a little less than that. Um, last week we held our last regional efficiency meeting of the year. Um, <coughs> there's a, a number of districts really working on a couple of fronts. Um, special ed transportation is one of the things that we're working on, finding a collaborative Western Connecticut way to share transportation services. Um, and so we've been working with Ed Advance and through special ed directors to identify all of the locations that we send students to so that we can look for more efficient ways to um, kind of leverage transportation costs. So it's been um, about seven months of work. Um, we're not quite to prove, we're, we're at proof of concept stage. So hopefully for next year, we're gonna be able to find some uh, efficiencies. Uh, graduation is Saturday, two o'clock at the O'Neill Center. Um, don't be late. Um, the uh, cabin gowns, however, for um, some staff are not in yet. Uh, we do expect them in any day, and Jostens has assured us they will be here Friday at the absolute latest. So we will keep board members posted if you're planning on attending. 
we'll make sure that you're not up there in uh, your jeans and t-shirt. We'll have uh, cap and gowns for you. Uh, last official day of school is next Thursday. Um, we're assuming there's no more weather issues between now and then. Um, if there's an approved budget tonight, many of you have gotten an email. We're looking Thursday to potentially have a meeting and to have a quorum so that we can uh, start to put a budget um, in place for July 1, which is a Sunday, and so that is fast approaching. Um, the senior picnic that um, Greg mentioned was the first time that we've held the senior picnic at Harrybrook. Um, when you do something new, it takes a lot more energy than doing it the way you used to do it. Um, and so this year's senior class had a, a storied history of events. And so the um, idea at the high school working with the students was to do something unique so that they had a legacy to leave. Um, and so I just wanted to say um, to Ms. Lewis and the PTO, thank you, and to the high school administration and the staff at the high school and the students that all worked really hard with the, the folks at Harrybrook to make that happen. And so it was a, uh, a big success and something I hope that we can continue. Um, and then grad night, if you haven't been part of grad night before and you haven't seen it, it really is something special. The PTO um, can always use support, donations, um, time is always important. Um, but that event is a little near and dear to me because it, those started kind of with my graduating class because lots of seniors um, were getting injured and horrible things were happening on grad night. And that, that whole process has kept children safe for decades. I won't tell you how many because I said it started when I was in high school. But um, <laughs> it's, it really has made an impact on many high school seniors and really has allowed them to, to go on and, and enjoy a longer life. Um, and so I just want to say to the PTO and the parents of this community, thank you for keeping that going and uh, encourage people to, to support it. Okay. Well, the polls close in approximately 20 minutes, so if you want to consider voting, <laughs> please don't speed. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> <coughs> as Mr. Smith said, expects that we be on standby for a special session. Um, should uh, the situation call for it. Uh, we'll keep you appraised of budget adjustments, this, that, and the other. Uh, challenge is the July 1 ending our books for this year and starting for next year. That's the challenge. And as uh, soon as I know, uh, we'll let you know how that process works. But uh, I'm confident that it'll be a smooth transition. Uh, the only other thing I can say, too, is graduation. Again, one of my favorite times of the year uh, this Saturday. So if anybody, can, if you can join us, uh, please do. And then with that being said, we'll move on to the committee and reports here. And we'll start with facilities. Sure. Uh, we had a, a, a good meeting uh, last Tuesday. Uh, started off with a... I, I read a letter by an Eagle Scout, Thomas King, who is here to present uh, a proposed uh, project at Northville, and it's a very interesting project, so I'm looking forward to him presenting it, because I didn't do it justice, I'm sure, when I read them <laughs> um, We also discussed the, the summer product, projects that will be going on, and mostly asbestos abatement, some security enhancement, and these are all budgeted uh, uh, plan, budgeted. Yes. Items, thank you. I need words today. Um, <laughs> it's a long school year. Um, also, we um, discussed summary hiring, and those jobs will be posted once we have a budget in place. Uh, and the damage, we had a damage update from the storms. Most of the, that damage occurred at the high school and at Hill and Plain School. Um, and we're working with insurance to make sure those repairs that need to happen happen. Um, and we also, uh, the fuel tank for uh, Hill and Plain has been ordered. Okay, thank you. Sure. Operations? Uh, well, we had a pretty um, lengthy agenda, and uh, many of those items are on here uh, for action for this evening. Um, I'll save a lot of the comments are captured in the minutes because we have those as action items under monthly reports so we can go through those with questions from board members. As we um, went through where we are as we're winding up our um, 
end of the year and where we are budget-wise and had to identify some cost factors in those line items um, as we wind down the end of the year. I would like to say that there are no end of the year projects except for the $25,000 um, uh, fire alarm bill that we're being paid for. Uh, all of the rest are budgeted items. And uh, so we did go through that and I'm sure when that motion comes up we'll go through that again. We have gifts and donations on here which um, uh, you heard from the PTO how generous uh, the community is to uh, our schools. We're very grateful for that. We have three bids uh, that we'll be awarding this evening and uh, two grants, I believe. We also have the uh, All-Star Transportation contract in which we have gone back to them to see. Before we get to that contract, I have a few corrections, it, just so the board knows that we have some date cleanup on page 7. It should reflect that this is 2018 beginning. Uh, it's a five-year contract. And on, um, I believe, on page um, 16, again, there it's a uh, two, it's July 2018. It's for five years. So I just wanted to clean that up. But again, that's on for approval, so we can go through that when we get to that. Um, we also had, um, we have an incentive for, that the board will be reviewing tonight for um, action, which is the administrator's um, incentive, uh, and we'll go through that. And we have several items of information um, that we'll go through. Uh, we had the emergency preparedness report and the wellness report, and of course the five-year capital plan, which as the board all knows, this, that's a fluid document, gives us an idea of what we have five years out. Um, and we did have a, a um, discussion on recommended budget adjustments. Our budget uh, proposal is for this evening. And there has been uh, several months of conversation brought to operations and to the full board to give board members a chance mm -hmm. to um, bring to the administration any concerns, questions, and thoughts that they'd like to so we're not you know, faced with it all perhaps on a Thursday night. So that's been a document that's uh, <coughs> been a work in progress and, and will continue to be. Um, if I've missed anything, I apologize. It was a rather aggressive agenda as you tend to wind up the end of the year. Um, and we had, uh, we did have a, I apologize, with the clubs and activities report. Some of these reports are at, asked for by board members and brought to operations, which I think is a good thing, um, that we can update what we have, why we have it. Um, and we had an excess cost payment um, that would, it had already been addressed um, in previous conversation of the shortfall, but um, again, that was also visited. So, hope I didn't hurry to. Okay. Policy Thank Mr. Shem isn't here, but I will fill in for him. As you can see on our agenda, we have um, <coughs> one policy for approval and we have five for first review. Committee on Learning. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Wendy. Get under that two minutes, Dave. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I'll make it quick. Uh, Committee on Learning, uh, all of our um, curriculum has been completed um, for review for the year, so we won't be starting that up again until <coughs> January or February because the district is putting together a new process which will allow running to take place during the school year. So we can look for that to be added back at the beginning of 2019. Um, we had two presentations. One was on the phonics pilot that is taking place. Um, the current phonics program, which is called Super Kids, um, they're looking to do some comparisons to see if they can bring some other phonics uh, programs to the district. Um, they are Fontis and Pinnell and Columbia units of study in phonics. And they will track the current program in comparison to these pilots to see if any of these new programs can add a benefit um, to Super Kids. Um, we also um, are in, um, going to be doing a summer reading program this year. Um, Mr. Corpo worked with um, Michael Klein to develop a coordinated response to summer reading, specifically focused on intervention of below grade level readers at the middle school level. They're working closely with the library on strategies to increase reading. Um, and individual schools have already begun emailing information to families and teachers are encouraging students to participate. The program implementation has been a collaborative effort with the library and others. Um, an SMS teacher is working with the local Girl Scouts to set up local libraries around town. The youth agency is involved in talks about getting their students involved. And the district will also be promoting the governor's summer reading challenge. The state is now monitoring <coughs> uh, participation 
and will award certificates to schools with the highest books per student count and highest participation. Our goal for the district is 100% of students to read a reasonable number of books over the summer and for 100% of students to complete the Governor Reading Challenge form during or after summer to log the books that they've read. So hopefully we'll have some great reading taking place over the summer um, to get the students to avoid that good old summer slide. So that's the Committee on Learning Report. Thank you. I live for that summer slide. <laughs> you <laughs> might have some too. At advance? <coughs> at advance, okay. I went to a meeting at the Access South new building. It was a, a Jewish school and they converted into, they bought it and converted into Access South, which was a very nice building. And Brian had his desk cleaned off. <coughs> he was told to have his desk cleaned off. So it was, the, the whole at advance thing was very interesting to me. It's 50 years old. They do amazing amount of different diverse things, which uh, Brian had told me about. They get 45% of its funding from state and federal grants, 55 from fees for service, and 1% from local donations. They have 175 vans that move every day, every school day to take kids. And as uh, Mr. Smith was talking about this, this new interactive map, which would be, when it gets up and, and going, it will be really interesting, because if a kid is in Litchfield and he has to go to Waterbury and he passes through Watertown, they can put them on the van and cut the uh, cost for the van in half for the, each district. So it, it'd be really great when it gets up and running. Uh, they have $5 million in reserve. <laughs> yeah, okay. And beyond that, they have $1 million invested in new buildings. They bought uh, two uh, old Catholic schools up in Torrington. They had a, a deal with UConn, but that wasn't going anyplace. They were going to take the UConn campus. Mm -hmm. but. That didn't go anyplace, so they bought two Catholic schools up in Torrington, which they now will own and not have to lease property, and they'll pay a mortgage mm -hmm. instead of lease and, and put their uh, Tor um, Litchfield programs up in Torrington. So uh, I have a, a couple page report in case you're really interested in it, but the whole thing is very fascinating. They work with Head Start, they have a director of talent at Advance for their uh, afternoon arts program. So they just, just hired that. They have adult ed. They have birth to three programs. Um, uh, the efficiency group, uh, you had Mr. Smith, I talked about the uh, ride sharing for the schools, but they've also put a couple school districts together and have the best price the treasurer has ever seen for Chromebooks because they're ordering in such bulk. So we can work on that in the future. They're working on a self-funded health insurance program that will eventually be offered to all districts. It will help the small districts most, but possibly larger ones like New Milford. And this was included in my package. This is their, the things they did for New Milford in particular mm. in 2016-17. Um, Not a lot of people were taken care of, but they did paraprofessional training. They supported employment, one person. Supported living services, two people. Older worker program, they had four people we're eligible for that, and it goes on and on. So I was very impressed with the whole concept, and that $5 million in reserve sounded really nice. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay, and CABE. Over the summer, CABE is offering several leadership conferences. If any of you are interested, just give the central office a call, and their uh, convention will be held in November on the... 16th and 17th and again I'll remind you of that as we get closer to that date if anybody cares to attend um, parts of that or all of it feel free to do so not quite I'll, I'll see what I can do <laughs> and negotiations uh, yes we are currently uh, working with the secretaries and we begin nurses next week. We'll begin our uh, preliminary meeting. Uh, so as um, perhaps some things slow down over the summer, our team will be together. So I'd like to thank everybody in advance. It's very, um, it's very important and it's time consuming and, and we appreciate everybody's uh, commitment to that. So we'll bring, there's no action at this time. Okay, thank you very much. Sure. And the magnet school. Um, nothing is happening in magnet school. They let out, they don't meet in the summer and in the spring meeting I guess just didn't happen so their big meeting is in the fall thank you okay discussion and possible action if I could ask <coughs> if there are any objections to moving item number H Eagle Scout project for NES 
with Mr. King and moving it right up, well, till now. <coughs> okay. Are there any? Nope. Okay. Is that all right with you, <coughs> sir? Okay. <laughs> I checked with everyone except the one that's involved. <laughs> I can speak a little um, in your packet. You'll see uh, to it there. Um, the proposal that we discussed at uh, the facilities subcommittee, um, Mr. King um, has a pretty ambitious project to build at Northville. Um, he's got lots of donations of, I hope, man hours as well as funding because there's some heavy lifting here. He's a strong guy, but you know those benches don't move themselves. Um, and so uh, prior to the board approval, um, Mr. McCauley asked that if we had any questions uh, of Mr. King uh, about the scope, concept, plan. Um, I believe we've worked out the technical details around electricity for the weather station. The, the uh, weather station is actually not going to be a part of the project anymore. Okay, so there we are. We worked it out so much that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we've worked it right, we worked out, it of right out of the plan. <laughs> <laughs> and it was under conversation. So. Yeah. Uh, maybe that's something we can look to in the future. That's the idea, yeah. Okay, good. Okay, sir. So um, my project, just to give a brief overview, is a conversion of the two courtyards at Northville Elementary School into outdoor classrooms. Um, one of the, cl one of the uh, courtyards will have a uh, teaching area installed in it, which is the main focus of my project. It will be two blackboards, or one blackboard and one whiteboard and a uh, group of concrete set benches where teachers could bring their students outside and give a lesson that they might normally give in a normal classroom environment outside, giving the students a chance to be in a different environment. And uh, there have been a number of studies that have shown that being able to move from one area to another actually helps retention a lot with learning. Um, in addition, the second courtyard will have a couple birdhouses put in and a bat house. Um, there will also be an area set up to be used as a reading nook, and I'll be building a storage mm -hmm. container to house uh, various seating options for students to use in that area. That is the general overview. I'll also be uh, doing some work on the flower beds there. There's a couple of memorial gardens that we'll be sort of revitalizing and also trimming back some of the growth. Okay. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Yeah, wh where are you going to store the truck board and the whiteboard? Uh, so they're going to be wall mounted. Oh. Um, at the learning area. Okay. Uh, I'm exp uh, currently it kind of investigating different options for uh, their removability in case they need to be replaced or to be brought inside during the winter months for okay. uh, their pres preservation. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. So these um, whiteboards, they are weather resistant yeah, for rain be. and that sort of? Yes. Okay. Yeah, the, the chalkboard is actually going to be uh, assembled using a form of insulation with blackboard paint over it that's fully weather resistant. So. Well, I think it's a wonderful idea mm -hmm. to, yeah. well, use our courtyards and uh, appreciate our environment as well. And uh, alternative settings for teachers are always a welcome Always a welcome choice to have. So, uh, but I do have to ask you: Are are you considered using it in the winter time? Currently, just... not particularly. <laughs> <laughs> I would be surprised after this past winter if anybody would be willing to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it sounds it sounds like a super idea and a super project, and well, thank we you. wish you well. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Uh, we do. I believe we do have to take an action on yes. it. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. If I could entertain a motion. I move. I'll second. Okay. Any further discussion? Should we clarify the motion? Brian. Brian. The motion is. Anything on there? Just for the purpose of the minute. To yep. The to approve the Eagle Scout project for NES. Great. Yes. That's what I moved. Okay. Any further discussion? Thank you. Those in favor? And that's unanimous. Thank you very Thank much, you. sir. Thank you. Okay, now we'll resume back to Exhibit A, Item A. I need a motion to approve Exhibit A, personnel certified, non-certified appointments, resignations, and leaves of absence as of June 19, 2018. So moved. Second. Do I have any discussion? Yes, sir. 
Well, just really a comment. There are a couple names on here uh, who uh, people who took uh, positions elsewhere, and it's always um, it's always sad to see uh, good teachers uh, leave the district to go elsewhere. It's always happy for them if they've gotten more money and it's better for their families, but it's always sad to see. So I, just I can speak to some of these um, without calling anybody out, you know, by name. I've met with the people who um, are going to other places, um, and in all cases, I believe, I'm going to double check, in all cases, um, they are, all the certified I can speak to, um, they are for promotion for, um, or for opportunities that um, aren't available in a public school district. They're leaving for some new opportunities that are created. Very positive um, conversations with these folks. Thank you. Any further discussion? Those in favor? And that's unanimous. Thank you. I need a motion to approve the monthly reports. Budget position dated May 31, 2018. Purchase resolution D711 and request for budget transfers. So moved. Okay. <laughs> I don't think that's been seconded until. So okay. Do, <laughs> do we have any discussion, questions, comments? Yes, ma'am. Just uh, this was uh, at operations. We did have this discussion that uh, we had. Um, um, the board of education had uh, worked with the town on closing a four hundred fifty thousand dollar obligation, and we made a conscious effort to do that. Mm -hmm. way back when. I mm -hmm. think that needs to be stated. We've had those conversations and some of that 450 has been captured because this administration made a real effort to identify those savings. Um, it wasn't uh, wasn't something that was just done overnight. It was done with collaboration and um, I, I'd like that to be entered into the minutes. We did have a discussion as to our encumbrances, where we were, where we expect to be, um, what um, those numbers uh, typically are to, to get us down to the end of the year and our end of the year balances um, and identified several of the larger expenditures um, that were captured. So I just would like to thank the administration and the team for, for Well, very this. valid points. I mean, as you said, this did not happen overnight. This is a series of uh, meetings with the town. Well, since, since November. what? S November, <coughs> I want to say? Yes. November? And, uh, you know, with all the moving parts, I'm just pleased that we are able to do that to close that gap. But you're, you're correct. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And I just want to tack on to that and, and clarify a little more. The money we had was because we consciously didn't fill positions, because we consciously mm -hmm. didn't purchase things. Right. It wasn't like that was just padded in our budget. No. We made correct. choices Actually, yes. to not do certain things so that we had that money. And that also needs to be noted in the, in the minutes. Excellent. Yes, I totally concur. Thank you for bringing that up. Any further? Uh, yes, ma'am. One other. Just no. No, no. <laughs> this is just for again. We. I had mentioned this in in uh, my report, but we do have an unexpected expenditure of twenty five thousand dollars. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, these things happen. This mm -hmm. is a weather related incident. And certainly mm -hmm. something we didn't plan for. But again, this comes out of our operational budget. So right. I would just like to be very clear that that is identified on the. Um, on the uh, report. It's on the I can just speak yes. a little bit. So the, the fire panel at the high school is what that will go to replace. Exactly. The fire panel is a $70,000 fire panel. Um, the insurance will cover uh, that panel, but the deductible on that is $25,000. So that's what you're approving tonight. Um, and we ha kind of have it band-aided um, so that once tonight's vote happens, we'll go and order that fire panel. Um, and that's where that 25 will go to. Thank you, and thank you for bringing that up. Okay. Those in favor? And that's unanimous. Thank you. Okay, gifts and donations. And the PTO is on there again. Hallelujah. I mentioned uh, I need a motion to accept gifts and donations. PTO Exhibit B in the amount <coughs> of $13,000. $873.54. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Any discussion? 
again, I think that's just astounding, the amount of work and preparation and helping and aiding our students um, throughout their school, school years from K through 12. So thank you, PTO. Uh, any other, other questions? Those in favor and opposed? Thank you. <coughs> I need a motion to accept gifts and donations. New Milford River Trail Association in the amount of $6,700. So moved. Awesome. Any discussion? Okay, and again, I'd like to thank this wonderful organization for providing, well, transportation. Uh, those in favor? And that's unanimous. Thank you. Hey, we have a policy for approval. I need a motion to approve policy 3520, student data privacy. Um, so, okay. So moved. I'll second. Okay, do we have any discussion on that? So I'd like to clarify a little bit. <clears throat> so this is a little unique in that you saw this once before, <coughs> but now that this is, uh, when we started this process, the legislative process hadn't ended. Now that process has ended, and this, uh, all the changes that you see here are really in accordance with um, state law. And so this is really per board bylaw 9311, you'll see at the top of the uh, draft, that you can, this is now for approval. Had this not been a part of the legislative process, we were gonna move this through our internal process anyway in preparation of state law changes, but now this is in reflection of state law changes, um, which is why we kinda had a process start one way, but we've accelerated it, so instead of holding this for second review, uh, we're asking for approval tonight per uh, 9311, and really it's to reflect changes in state law. Yes. So my question is, uh, the four positions that are defined on the front page, do we have a uh, cost for those? Um, those definitions are not um, positions in this district. Okay. They are um, the parties that may be part of the contract process. Mm -hmm. So um, a contractor would mean somebody that we are purchasing a service for. Yeah. Our student information system is a contractor that we license the software through. Mm -hmm. We have to have a contract with them where they assure to the components of this policy mm -hmm. uh, and the protection of student data. And how much does that cost us? Nothing. I mean, Nothing. Okay. It, it costs us labor, it costs us time, it costs mm -hmm. us perhaps okay. a review of contract. We're working both internally and regionally and on a state level to come up with boilerplate contract language so that we don't have to send every contract for a legal review to make sure it complies. Mm -hmm. um, but there's no position that we're creating. There are districts that have created compliance positions. Mm -hmm. um, we just called Ms. Pratt and said, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. got a job for you. Um, <laughs> carve out a little extra space on that plate. Yeah, that was, um, that was my next question. Can you, how much of this can be done in-house? So uh, really, all of it is what's happening. I mean, I think we're working through internal structures okay. to figure out how we can reallocate. Um, and then once this process is underway across Connecticut, a lot of our contractors know this is coming, there is, and so there hopefully won't be a lot of extra legwork. I think the problem comes in with the reporting structures in here. Um, and, and so if there is a breach, that's the burden of labor on the district mm -hmm. um, and making sure that we comply with our reporting responsibilities in here. Assuming all the vendors understand what they have to do, which all the major ones do, it's some of the third party smaller vendors that are gonna have a harder time. Mm -hmm. um, but as long as everybody plays by the rules and they protect the data in the way they should, um, you know, the startup will be a painful startup for us. Yeah. Uh, we've been working towards this for the past two years. Um, well, hopefully once it's underway, it won't be a, a lot of extra internal burden. These are these unfunded, unfunded mandates where there's yeah. no dollar amount tied to this, mm -hmm. but there is labor. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. it's the same people sitting at the table that just have more to do. Mm -hmm. And that's, the, you know, eventually okay. that starts to, to weigh on us as a district. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Okay. Those in favor? 
And then we have policies for first review. If you have any questions, again, they'll be coming back to us a second time and then for a third time. All right, moving on to the bid awards. I need a motion to award the bid for milk to Wade's Dairy Incorporated for a period of one year. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor? And opposed? That's unanimous. Thank you. I need a motion to award the bid for frozen dessert to New England Ice Cream Corporation for a period of one year. So moved. I'm a second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> do we have a do we have a uh, any discussion? Any questions? Any bids? Those in favor? And that's unanimous? Yep. Unanimous. Thank you. Security services. I need a motion to award the bid for security services to Securitas for a period of three years. So moved. Second. And do we have any discussion? Those in favor? And that's unanimous. Thank you. The grant approvals. I need a motion to approve the Carl D. Perkins grant in the amount of $34,500. So moved. I'll second that. You seconded it, Dave? Yes. <laughs> Any discussion? Those in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Adult Education. I need a motion to approve the Adult Education Grant ESL for Life and Work Pathways to the Future in the amount of $83,000. I'm so moved. Second. Any discussion? <coughs> Just a general comment. These, the paperwork for these grants is extensive, and it, it's certainly the paperwork that's involved oh. to get these, all of these grants yes. processes is extensive, oh, absolutely. and the board recognizes that and appreciates all that's Yes, it's very time-consuming and very detailed. There's no question. In those in favor? And, and H we have already approved. Moving on to I. I need a motion to approve the appointment of the assistant superintendent and in his or her absence, the director of human services, as designee for the superintendent of schools from July 1, 2018 through June 30th, 2019. Human resources, I think you meant, Dave. Human, what did I say? Services. Yes, I did. Human resources. Could you read that motion again? Yeah, How many designees are yeah. on there? Two. Two. I need a motion to approve the appointment of the assistant superintendent and in his or her absence the director of human resources as designee for the superintendent of schools from July 1, 2018 through June 30, 2019. Okay. I'll move that. Second. Any discussion? Just question. Yeah. How do you... I know Assistant Superintendent, why do you, how, did, how come the uh, Elian Human Resources? Um, so if Alicia and I are on our book tour, right. um, <laughs> and uh, I mean, you're following Alicia on the book tour. I got it. That's right. I got it. I do the camera and mic. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's it. Right. That's right. <laughs> um, and then uh, Ms. Baldelli that's is the, 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 that's the protocol that we follow. Protocol. Okay. Um, and I it's point, always been. Yeah, I didn't do that. Yeah, no, it's good to know. Yeah. Yeah. So, I have no offense. Question. Question. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, guess what? We're all kind of <laughs> Well, okay. you know, just get ready for the book tour. That's now, all. Now, <laughs> now we have that straightened out. Those in favor? And that's unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Jay, I need a motion to authorize the superintendent to accept resignations and make appointments excluding administrative appointments from June 20th, 2018 through September 18, 2018. So moved. I'll second. second. Yeah. I'll second. And any discussion? Yeah. And so those administrative appointments, by those being included in the motion, will come to the board? Correct. Correct. I just want that to be clarified mm -hmm. in the minutes. 
but, but it will come to board as what? Uh, most likely, I guess a it depends a little bit. It would come as a recommendation, but it, we would pro either put it on a scheduled board meeting or perhaps a special meeting of the right. board um, okay. because the board would have part of that interview process. Right. And we've done that in if the If that's for the administrative. Okay. Those in favor? <coughs> and opposed? Thank you. That's unanimous. Okay, item K. I need a motion to authorize the superintendent to purchase budgeted instructional materials and other supplies, equipment, and services from June 20, 2018 through September 18, 2018. So moved. A second. And any discussion? Those in favor? And that's unanimous. Thank you. Okay, all star transportation. Uh, and no. what I miss? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, goodness. <laughs> that was a Freudian miss. You have one to that. Yes, sir. I believe that's, yes, that's just so, for your right. information. So, <coughs> it's an item of information. Um, in your no, packet, you'll see a breakout. Yes. This is from operations. Correct. It was passed yeah. through. Um, and mm -hmm. on this, uh, there's a, on the bottom of this is a 10-year average of our year-end actuals and the percent of budget. Um, Mr. Giovanone and I would both tell you that best practice is to have a 1% margin of error. Um, and so best practice would be a 1% ending of the year. That would mean that 18 months ahead, we are 99% accurate. Mm -hmm. um, here are our historical actuals, and the average of 10 years is six-tenths of a percent. I think that's the reality. Um, and we, re we recognize that um, a 1% is a goal, and it's good to have goals, but you may not always reach them. Um, on the top of this page, we put kind of a, a little chart that showed where our total budget was, um, what if we met our 10-year average, our end-of-year balance would be. We are saying we will not be at our 10-year average this year. And part of that is because of the state cuts that we're addressing on the town side. And part of that is storm damage. Part of that is um, some of the other pressures that we had. Um, and so we're saying that we expect to be somewhere between one-tenth of one percent um, and six tenths of one percent, and that's kind of we talked about about a hundred thousand dollar end of year. Going lower than that, we feel is extremely risky mm -hmm. because there are audit adjustments that happen. Mm -hmm. Those audit adjustments the last two years have been in the forty to, to eighty thousand uh, dollar range. Um, thank you, sixty to eighty. <coughs> and so, um, leaving less than a hundred thousand kind of in the tank to mitigate any adjustment is a liability for all of us at this table. Um, and so that's where we're working to end the year with 100000 in the tank. Um, however, if we ended at 389000 that would be our 10-year average, which is still, we would tell you, about $300,000 short of what best practice would be. Thank you. And there's no, we're not taking any motion because our end of the year balance, a motion is typically taken, uh, what, in August and September? That's right. And at that time, can we clarify the language because we have a little bit of a different process this year in identifying a particular <coughs> line item to the town of New Milford? Yes. So, uh, so the short answer, I can, I can tell you a little bit. So, yep. so right now what you have in this packet is <coughs> the May budget position Correct. statement. Correct. There there's a whole month that's, that's happening and... <laughs> Pretty much all of that month, mm -hmm. we're in school. Right. Mm -hmm. So unlike prior years when that June is a half a month of business, right. this year you have a full month of business that's happening. So in August, typically, or September, you will get the June position statement mm -hmm. as part of your packet. Right. That June position statement will show you what our year-end end, year balance. Our year-end balance this year is going to have kind of an artificial extra 450000 in it. Because, because it's captured for the town. That's mm -hmm. correct. We've agreed to give the town. Mm -hmm. So that's the piece that we're telling you, if you look in the audit report next year, and, and here's one of the conversations we're having with the town, 
we would like an invoice almost from the town mm -hmm. for 450,000. We have discussed this so it is identified when you move on that that, that $450,000 was captured as almost a bill, so to speak. Mm -hmm. That's correct. You know, so on the bottom of, well, it's okay, but on the bottom of this chart, if, for example, we don't get a bill from the town, then basically in 2017, 18, um, that year end balance would have a little asterisk on it. You know, think of your Hall of Fame book, right? right. And your home runs there, a little asterisk. Okay. Um, because that 450,000 of whatever our year end balance would be really was a commitment to the town. And so if there's an invoice that we can then create an encumbrance and a purchase order for, then it's not part of our year end balance. It's really a debt that we're paying. And then there's no asterisk on our that would be the cleaner way. Average. If we That's could do correct. it, that would be the clean because we have this conversation and a little bit at operations as well about identifying that. So when you do look at that dollar amount that you don't um, for someone that perhaps doesn't see these reports on a regular basis, that you're not that, that number isn't artificially higher, That's so correct. to speak that it's been captured and identified as, as a... Um, so we're going to work with the town yeah. finance director to come up with the back-end mechanics to make that happen. So can I ask a question? So at the end of the year, whatever balance we have remaining would roll to the town anyway? Typically, but, no. Well, it would roll to the town, and then we, once the audit is complete, wouldn't we ask them to put it in capital? But this is not the case because <coughs> we've already That's promised correct. this to the town. So instead of just rolling it, you want to pay it as a bill? Yes and no, yes. but we typically take a motion that our end of the year balance would be asked to be placed in the capital Reasons. reserve pending final audit. There's never a number. Uh, of course, but we're so, not going to wait for the final audit no, to no, roll no. the 450 well, because it's going to be treated as an invoice. That's well, what we're working out the that's details. That's what we're working on, yes. but the motion come August <coughs> September could still, as long as we work through that, could still identify the 450 and have the remainder of the Board mm -hmm. of Education balance be placed in the capital reserve pending audit because you've carved out that 450. I don't know the mechanics of it, but that's basically how we do it. And then what happens is, you know, uh, we send that request forward. The request is usually acted on in January, February after the audit is complete yeah. on the town council and then goes to board finance. So yeah, we, we would, uh, we, yes, that never happens until after, even though you'll know you can't move anything until after the audit. But this 450 is just being identified. Yes. Yep. So that motion in August or September is fine, even if it's 450. We should have it moved by then. But we'll rely on the auditors for their guidance on how to properly record that. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I appreciate that. The most important thing is, is for the motion in January to reflect that, because the backup yeah. that we use for the motion in January to request money from the capital reserve always references a specific page in the audit. OK. So it matters more for the January motion. Yeah where you would request that money to go into Board of Ed Capital Reserve. Because you're tying it into the audit? Yes. I see. Okay. Yep. That's good to know. I won't forget that. Sorry. <laughs> 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 you don't want to write it down, huh? Page 24 of 26 of the audit. Uh, I wrote it down to remind you. <laughs> okay. Uh, the All-Star Contract. I need a motion to approve the proposed five-year contract beginning July 1, 2018 between New Milford Board of Education and All-Star Transportation for Pupil Transportation Services. So moved. Second. And is there any discussion? I was, let me speak to question. it. Yeah. I'm looking at the penalties. Now, who determines <laughs> the time they should be at the school? Because I'm looking at 10 minutes. That's not a lot if there's mm -mm. traffic or something, if it's a tight schedule. That's right. So there's a couple of layers to that. Um, if it is um, on a daily, we, we have a daily bus chart um, mm -hmm. that we monitor the arrival times of buses. Uh, if there's issues, you know, some of this, like the first day of school, obviously, there's some leeway that we work with although even on the first day they're usually pretty good right. uh, but we monitor at the schools um, the building principals the first kind of line of defense if there's an issue uh, and then mr. Giovannone travels out there with a stopwatch um, yeah, and it, yeah, and, yeah. If, and if that's uh, yeah. <laughs> um, we, we all wear a lot of hats you I know? Was gonna say. <laughs> um, and if there's issues uh, it, uh, he would work with the bus company. Get, my point is, who decides the route and how 
fast it should be done. Is that Anthony's doing so that? So the the, we work with the bus company. The bus company the bus companies the, they, they, they create all the routes. Right. We give them enrollment. We give them the it. address of all okay. the students enrolled, and they create those bus routes. It, it hasn't been an issue. Uh, uh, at times the we've well, had the a few runs. I, oh, yeah. No, 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 the penalties. I, I, I've, yeah. I've seen some buses going pretty quick. We won't go there. Yeah, but I'm just saying it's, it's you know they weren't I, I our buses. Those, those, were, those, were those, those were not our buses. <laughs> I can assure you. Oh, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Playing in a pool and watching the bus whiz by. You know? <laughs> David, for, uh, I don't know, Mr. Smith, if you wanted to do a brief overview. Yes, Basically, I think. The, the bus contract was, we began this conversation way back in November, December mm -hmm. of last year, yeah. around there. Um, and when we were, um, we had uh, two years left of the contract. We were going into year two next year. And um, when we were looking for budget adjustments, because as we move into budget adjustments, this conversation is going to play into this, we went back and scheduled a meeting, uh, myself and the board chair and Mr. Smith with uh, Dufour, and uh, reevaluated the contract. Uh, it's a five-year contract. It's a zero in year one. Um, and we're looking at one bus reduction. I, it's also important to call to the board's attention on page 12 that uh, the GPS will be um, upgraded mm -hmm. at the at the expense of the bus company, uh, which was a nice little perk. We appreciate that, and uh, their investment in in the um, in the fleet is crucial. So there's a savings here, in which will be most likely brought to the board for um, budget we, adjustment. Yeah, I, I can I can speak to that. Sure. So you know, we heard um, from board members over the course of the last three months about areas to look at. Um, some of them are on tonight. One of those was transportation. It's a large line in our budget. Um, we heard from the town council and the community, look for places that don't impact children. Uh, this is one of those places. And so in return for a five-year contract, with it, we would have a 0% increase. Uh, this also saves one bus. Um, that's approximately $150,000 that we will save in next year's budget with this contract. So that is um, the advantage of being able to, we, we're facing a $1.2 million cut, assuming you know, the budget counts are, are, have begun. So I can say assuming the budget pass, um, that we will have the best case scenario is approximately 1.2 million in cuts that we're facing right now. This would eat up 150,000 approximately of those cuts um, and enter us into a five-year uh, contract with this company. Can I ask a question to uh, just what do you mean GPS? What, what are they doing with GPS? So currently our buses all have <coughs> um, in their radios, they have signals, right. but it's not global positioning. So the new radios that will be installed at the cost of the vendor, this is something that we tried to get in years. to the propane buses. Mm -hmm. It's also something that we tried to get in years ago and the technology wasn't there to run through um, New Milford. So these will all run on um, cell phone technology but it will allow us to basically pinpoint any bus uh, in its route. It's will allow, will allow parents to do that? Not at this time. No. <laughs> so I can see if my bus is coming. No, not quite yet. Let's <laughs> 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 see how much time I have to yes. get my kids ready. Technical question. Um, we have two umbrella policies. Is one a first layer and one a second? Is the nine the first and the five the second layer? Correct. And we're paying for the second layer. And yes, it's the same as it is. Yeah, that part of this contract doesn't change. And actually, that's another point that I had forgotten to bring up. Thank you so <coughs> for that um, while you were researching my question. Um, this contract over the years has been written by our legal team. It has also been vetted completely by our legal yes. team. When this came to operations, we had asked that it come in spirit only and that the contract would come to the board after operations asked to send it on and here it is we have a few typos but the spirit of it is the same so it has been fully vetted by our attorney yes. okay. and our insurance carriers are satisfied with the 14 million actually yes so like i said the the mechanics the pieces of this contract that have changed from our current are the scope uh the terms as far as cost in year one uh, the GPS piece, right. um, but other than that, the stock language is the same exact language that we have and we have had for the past seven or eight years, I believe. So that so, begs the question, giving potential liability costs, it, are two layers 
of excess adequate. I mean, we met with Kerma two weeks ago or three weeks ago and reviewed all of our policies, and they did not make a recommendation to this policy for any scope of change. Okay. Kerma is our liability for yeah. both us and the team. Does that satisfy your Yes, I, okay. I, I just as long mm -hmm. as they're satisfied with okay. the amount no, of Okay, no, just so I could carry on with the vote, that's all. Okay, those in favor? <coughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's unanimous. Okay. And, and I need a motion to execute the memorandum of agreement with the New Milford School Administrators Association to implement an early retirement incentive program. So moved. Second. I'll, in second. In any discussion. I can speak a little to this. Um, again, out of an, I believe, operations subcommittee, um, it was Ms. Chastain, but it was one of those members that asked that we look at some retirement incentives. Again, looking at a $1.2 million cut, turning over every rock that we can find. Um, not that I'm calling any administrators rocks, by the way, um, <laughs> but looking in places that we could minimize direct impact to students. And although, as our retirees left tonight, we lost a lot of institutional knowledge, that also allows us for um, some salary turnover. And so um, we created an incentive. The uh, teachers' bargaining unit has uh, a program built into their contract that starts July 1. Um, and the scope and size of that bargaining unit and the time constraints didn't really allow that bargaining unit. And so that was why the administrator's bargaining unit was looked at. Those in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. <coughs> oh, you need actually two motions. Yes, to make, I do. To, to make this I need happen. a motion. I'm sorry, um, my mistake. It's okay. I need a motion to authorize the board chair to execute on the board's behalf the individual administrator's election agreement, release, and waiver forms when returned to the superintendent's office. Part two. Second. Those in favor? I have a question on that. Uh, we'll. I, so let me just explain what that yeah, means. That's exactly okay. where I'm going. So Thank the you. first motion that you took, you agreed to the um, structure and terms of the agreement. Mm -hmm. Should an administrator decide to participate in this plan, they have until June 25th to turn in their intent and to sign. And the second motion that you're now taking yeah. is authorizing the board chair to accept that and to sign off on that. And that information upon acceptance will be sent to the board? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. Those in favor? <coughs> and that's your next. <coughs> okay. Moving on to items of information and discussion. Okay. Field trip report. May I speak on this for a second? Sure. I can give you an update on uh, prison. That's right. My daughter got to go to prison. <laughs> Went to prison. Okay. Is that something you, you want to admit? Sure. You're admitting that right here on TV. I, uh, they were fortunately able to get that, that trip in. And, and to tell you how these things can be interesting, um, my daughter was at the front of the line going through security. And about five of them got into the prison, and the balance 55 were outside the door when an alarm went off oh, outside. Geez. And so the officers at the guards at the door said to the, the five or six of the men, just stand right here, and they could see their friends and teachers out there. And my daughter <laughs> and four other friends were inside when everybody came running out of doors and corrections officers all over. And then um, they smelled the, the, the fragrance of pepper spray uh, mm. coming down the hall. So they came back down to corrections officers and said to them, does anybody have asthma or any breathing problems? They're like, no, they're, it should clear in a minute or two. And what it was was a prisoner who had a difference of opinion with a corrections officer. <laughs> it was a nice political <laughs> way of putting it. Then eventually the rest of them all got in, uh, but she did say they got to sit in groups of uh, five with at least three uh, prisoners. And it, it just so happened uh, that my daughter got to sit and, and talk for, for well over an hour with 
three prisoners who were, were all in on murder charges. Um, so they're, if they're not lifers, they were close to lifers. And uh, it was fascinating. Uh, it's eye-opening, I think, for them. So it's probably a good thing. Uh, but they all seem to enjoy it. They said that they, 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 the prisoners were very open with them and spoke to them. They were very pleasant, very professional for being in that environment um, and being in that situation in life. So it was an overall interesting experience for them. Hmm. And I, I, I think a lot of credit goes to Mrs. Uh, Lee, who put that program together. Thank you. Good. Any other questions, field trips? And that's it. That you can't do better now on a field trip. Yeah, that really. <laughs> 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 well, well, well. <laughs> and <coughs> the annual emergency preparedness. So these went through um, subcommittee as well. This is state uh, statute that we report each year. Uh, and capture some of the wellness activities uh, at a board meeting. Uh, it's on preparedness, but okay. I'm sorry, and wellness. I have well uh, you're both of them. Annual emergency preparedness yep. and then wellness. Both yep. of them are yep. both driven by right. statute. Right. Both of them capture right. things both that we've gone required. over in multiple environments. Thank you. Yeah, this was a little <coughs> dicey, but uh, um, the adjustments. And before, before we look at the, our skeleton here, Again, I encourage all of you, and I know many of you have been, and thank you very much, uh, forwarding your suggestions to myself and or uh, the superintendent. So uh, please uh, continue with that. I think if we have enough uh, conversation, we can uh, come up with something that's palatable for all of us. I have a question on this list that just occurred to me. Uh, this draft that's been brought forward, is this a culmination of all the requests that board members have brought to you? So, no, there's still some, um, <coughs> a couple of pieces. So there's, uh, there's probably two phases of this that are still being built. One would be uh, items that board members have asked us to look into that we either haven't completed mm -hmm. research on or are still working on putting together kind of cost ranges or estimates. Um, and then there's an, another list of things that board members might have mentioned, but at this point um, we either don't see any cost savings or the impact to the district is instructionally too great for us right now. And so the plan would be to take this, assuming that in the next 15 or 20 minutes we right. find out that we have right. a budget, and then to, to fill this in with dollar amounts um, and specifics uh, and that would be what we would share with the board, along with items that didn't make it to the list and a rationale as to why. And if I could expand on that, um, since, and I, I, I understand that, should the budget move forward this evening, I'm hopeful that this list will not be brought in the night of budget adoption. That if this list or yeah, anything we, can we, be filled in prior to that. We will definitely do our best to give as much notice as possible. Those, I Believe me, I know I'm on the receiving end as well. And again, <laughs> I'd like to remind everybody, <coughs> the initial, initial um, proposals are the administrations. We always, always, okay, uh, do the final sign-off. But yes, the earliest... So prior to a special meeting, <coughs> I, I concur with you. If I ask, I mean, this is a question that we wrestle with internally. So, Absolutely. Um, <coughs> again, so if, if uh, you play scenario one out, where we have a budget mm -hmm. passed tonight, uh, and we've talked about having a Thursday night meeting, um, is your preference that the administration fill this document in um, with our recommendations and then email it to the members of mm -hmm. the committee? Yes. Um, and so that you can come in on Thursday uh, yes. prepared. I would say that, and that we're okay with that. We're fine. The challenge becomes, and this is where it gets a little sticky, if, if there's something on there that you have recommended that you don't see on there, Correct. Um, I would recommend then there's two ways to do that. One would be our intent is to explain that to you at the board meeting. Um, we may be able to put some of that context into the email that goes out, but we want to be very careful about not creating a... Um, an illegal meeting and having conversation. Right. So once you have that, you can hold on to that yeah. just like we do a board packet, well, or you can call me directly. Well, again, as I stated prior, uh, it's the superintendent's proposed budget, That's correct. and we can always add, <coughs> delete, and whatever. Can I, can I ask a question about that? Um, 
It was to begin at Wednesday. I'm like, what when are you saying? Is Thursday meeting soon enough? I mean, too early to digest it? So here's the timeline <laughs> okay. issue that this is, this is no the challenge choice. that we're up against. It takes, once the board decides where the cuts are going to come and how we tally out the 1.2, and once there's a town budget, there's a large amount of mechanics that happen in order to create the actual budget that goes into a place on July 1st, which will really be July 2nd, Monday, July 2nd. Um, and then the first payroll of next year is July 6th, that Friday. So our finance department, it takes, you know, a solid okay. week to build all those pieces. And depending on how we make these cuts, you could be talking about large amounts of transfers and lines that have to be created and rectified. Um, and that's where not only us, but the, the town has to create those shell structures too, which is where if there's not a budget that's approved tonight and we have to go through another process, um, I would tell you that we're looking at not having, there's a couple of technical moves that we can make to create a, a working budget for the first week or two in July, um, but the mechanics of setting this up take time. Um, and you can't just flip a switch. And so that's where if you wait until next week, there won't be enough time to have a budget built by July 2nd. Okay. Um, that's the time pressure yeah, we're under. That's, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> and number 11, executive session. I need a motion to enter into executive session to discuss the proposed three-year contract for superintendent of schools and invite Mr. Smith if warranted. So moved. Second. And those in favor? Those in favor? Aye, aye. Okay. Aye, aye. Aye, aye.
remember. I wonder if you use it. Oh, Lester cleaned it up. Okay. If I could entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting at 9.05 p.m. So moved. <laughs> any, dis any discussion? Second. Those in favor? Aye. And that's unanimous. I want to stay. Okay, thank you, everybody. All right. Here, this is, I don't know. Can you pass the budget?